Welcome to part two of the master key system. In this video, we're gonna be covering uh, important parts of part two, uh, master key system, how it works, uh, overview of the book. Thank you for joining me because uh, whatever brought you here, trying to learn about the master key system, if you've already read the book, or if you're trying to dive into more knowledge about it, um, this is a tremendous book. And I applaud you for doing that because this information in this book is uh, extremely important. It is extremely important if you have a mind. If you have a mind, this book applies to you and it can work for you no matter what. So thank you for joining and I'm gonna help us go through this book and piece by piece, hopefully that we can understand it and implement these things in our life just a bit better. Uh, yes, knowledge is important and understanding, but this book also incorporates practical aspects of it. This book gives us practical things to do step by step for each part and doing that will ensure that we not only understand the information intellectually but we put it into application to reap the rewards and benefits that this book provides. So I highly recommend going over part one first and doing the practical aspect of it for four days to a week and then coming back to this video for the next step. So what did we learn in part one? We learned that there are two operating minds in our body. One is our conscious mind and then we have our subconscious mind. We learned that our conscious mind is our analytical thinking mind um, that we use in day-to-day -day life. Um, this mind is has its home in our brain and our spinal cord. The brain and spinal cord operate the functions of our conscious mind and how we know this is that our nervous system has senses. We have touch, taste, feel, smell, and see seeing. And these senses operate through our nervous system, which relay feedback to us. Um, and then we understand it through our conscious mind. So if I touch something, I can tell if this is soft or hard. I can smell it. This is how we interact with our external world through our conscious mind. We also learned about our subconscious mind, which has its home in our solar plexus. And our solar plexus is in our abdomen, a set of nerves in our abdomen. And this is the home of the solar plexus. This governs totally other things um, in our day-to-day -day life. So one of the important parts about uh, part two is that the subconscious mind is all pervading. It is all omnipresent, it is omnipotent, it has um, access to the infinite. And these words, they may not even make sense, it, it could be hard to comprehend, but that's why this book is so important because it breaks it down um, analytically, how the subconscious mind is part of the infinite and how it's connected to us, how we have these uh, infinite resources and capabilities through our subconscious mind. The subconscious mind is an automatically functioning uh, system with us. This is always functioning, it never sleeps, it never stops, and it always knows what to do to keep us alive, to keep us thriving, and it is always doing its best to keep us there, to live our best life. And how do we know this? So um, right now you're watching this video, um, but we're not telling our heart to beat. We're not telling ourselves to breathe. We're not telling ourselves to grow hair or digest the food that we've just eaten. These things are happening automatically. And if I were to cut myself, the subconscious mind, that aspect of ourselves, would automatically give resources to heal that wound, automatically. And we don't have a choice. We don't have a choice. This power, it overrides our choice. It knows that we want to, you know, it'll keep us alive. It'll keep us alive and it'll do things in a way to keep us functioning sending hormones where they need to go, growing our bones while we're growing. We couldn't tell ourselves to stop growing um, when we're younger. It is happening automatically uh, in the background. And this subconscious mind is all pervading because it always knows what to do and to do it all the time. So if we want an example of how we know this is an um, all pervading connection to the universe, you can use different words. Depending on what words you use, you can call it spirit or soul, um, our connection to God, our connection to the infinite, the universe, a universal power, a creative intelligence inside of us. Um, and I share those words because one of them might be uh, stick more than the other. But whatever it is, this power is all around us. So for example, I'm sitting here amongst some grass 
and this grass is growing. And what is telling this grass to grow? What is telling all of these trees to grow and to function as best as they can? Um, and if it were up to this blade of grass, it would grow all the way up to the clouds if nobody cut it. And that's the driving force within nature. The driving force within nature, this is an automatic process. Every tree, every living organism, bug, insect, animal has this driving force inside of it for a greater expansion of life. And that is an example externally of this pervading, all pervading power, universal power, and that is also inside of us. So even though consciously we may not trying to do our best or do all of these things, the subconscious mind is a part of that all pervading power, so it is automatically doing that for us. Even if we haven't told us to, uh, to you know, heal my wound or to grow hair, it's automatically doing it. And that's how we know that uh, the subconscious mind is connected to this all pervading power. The only difference is that um, its difference is in capacity. So the all pervading power is doing all these things and forces around the world, across the universe. We have a little piece of it. We have a little piece of it that governs our body. And that is the, the similarity that we have with it, that it has that automatic functioning for a greater expansion of life, for more life. And the only difference is the capacity in which we have this power. And the main point of this is that this is an automatic process of the universe. This is an automatic process of the universe that which we have inside of us, and it isn't even trying. This is happening automatically. It doesn't have to contemplate, do I want to go this way or that way? Nature already knows the, full, the best path for a fuller expansion that keeps us in harmony with the whole. Right? You know, when we're sleeping, we are totally unconscious, but our body is going through all of these functions. So while the conscious mind is away, the subconscious mind never sleeps. This thing does not get a rest. And this has been the way every day since birth. Um, so this is just explaining how important this subconscious mind actually is, how it relates to us. And now we're going to get into uh, parts about the conscious mind. This system of the subconscious mind is always working. It is extremely powerful. And our, we can't even comprehend all of the things that it's doing for us at this very moment, let alone our whole lives. Um, if the conscious mind had an idea of what was going on and wanted to do it by itself and knew what to do, it simply wouldn't have the capacity to, to oversee all of these operations. These things are just happening, things are just happening in our mind, uh, in our body, so much that the conscious mind can't even keep up with it. Um, and quite frankly, it's not the conscious mind's job to oversee these things. And in this book, The Master Key System, there is plenty of references talking about external versus internal world, how they both relate to us. And in part one, as you remember, internal creates external. And this idea, uh, when I first heard it, and for a lot of us, may be so foreign to us, well, what does that mean? How does internal create the external? I thought I came into this world, this external world that was already here, and I'm just playing in it. Uh, this idea is going to reverse that on its head, and I'm mentioning it, mentioning it, and I'm mentioning it, and I'm bringing it up again, just as a reminder, again to ponder this thought that internal affects external, internal creates external. Everything uh, derives from within. Our subconscious mind, when we close our eyes and we go into that internal world when we're doing our thinking, when we're using our faculty of imagination, this is when we are using these internal uh, functions that are a part of us, instead of constantly relating to things in our external world. And the idea of the conscious mind is that sometimes we may not be aware of our subconscious mind or these other factors that are happening in our life. Um, and what can happen is that our solar plexus, which is our generating power of us, uh, that gives us life energy force, we may be doing things consciously that may be putting uh, a dim to this light. Um, so, you know, when they say that happiness is already there, the energy is already within us, everything we have is within us, this is true. It is there. It's in our solar plexus. The only thing, the problem is that certain things restrict 
this solar plexus and the energy that comes from it. And the things that we do consciously, uh, we need to think about it. Is this going to restrict or is this going to expand uh, our energy, our flow, uh, the energy that comes from our subconscious? So I hope that that was as clear as mud and that some of these ideas now are starting to kind of resonate with us and they're starting to uh, you know, make a little bit of sense. And even if they're not, um, it's good to just contemplate these things and try to understand and think about it. How does the external influence, uh, how does the internal influence the external? How is it a internal world primary and external world secondary? These things are, can be hard concepts to grasp, but that's why I'm bringing it up again from part one so that we can move forward with uh, part two and the rest of this book and understanding it fully. And now we get to the main part of our practical aspect for part two. So like I said, if you haven't looked at or understood or fully grasped part one's instructions, I highly recommend you do that before uh, embarking on part two. So part one, like we said, uh, having that done for a week to for four days to a week consistently then we move on to part two and this is what part two is so part two what we want to do is replicate what we did in part one replicate what we did in part one with a little bit of a tweak uh, and this tweak is going to be to still get into a room a quiet place and sit down um, and do nothing for up to 15 15 for about 15 minutes up to half an hour. Uh, and a little bit of a change now, so we should be used to that, having full control of our body, being able to sit with our eyes closed. Uh, that's a conscious choice that we could do. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna try to inhibit all thought. And don't worry trying to succeed at this because it will be impossible. The idea is not to fully succeed at this and be a master at inhibiting all thought. What we want to do is to try the exercise for four days up to a week consistently to prove to ourselves that we can at least try to do this. And in the act of trying is where we will reap the biggest benefits from part two. So like I said, you will fail at inhibiting all thought for part two, but what this is going to do is show us how many thoughts, how consistently thoughts are coming into our mind spontaneously without even a hint of an effort. And what we're gonna try to do is try to inhibit these thoughts. We will not be successful at this. Maybe for a fraction of a second, we will be able to inhibit all thought. That's the kind of uh, task that we're faced with here and that's, that is a de definition of success. A fraction of a second, a fraction of a moment of inhibiting all thought, but we're gonna do it for 15 minutes up to half an hour for four days to a week. We're gonna sit in a quiet room have that time to ourselves to practice this part of the master key system. So thank you for watching. Good luck on implementing these practical steps and I look forward to seeing you for part three.